I confess. I have a problem. I have a serious, serious problem. Let me show you. My chickens have been really productive. Hmm. And those are the good ones. I probably threw out two dozen bad ones. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do something I haven't ever done before. I'm gonna pickle eggs and um, have them made shelf stable. So we'll see. Come with me and let's do this. I'm going to interject this early in the video. This is not a USDA approved method of canning. They do not recommend canning pickled eggs for shelf stability. Most people do pan them and then put them in the refrigerator. So this is not an approved method. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to boil some eggs. So I start mine with cold water. And these are farm fresh eggs, but they have been sitting for um, more than 12 hours. So you want to carefully place them down in the bottom. You don't want them hitting the bottom. And I have lost count. 64. That's a lot of eggs. But we'll turn that up to high and let it come up to a boil and we'll be back. All right. So... The eggs are starting to boil. I'm going to turn them down. I'm going to cook them on medium heat for about 15 to 17 minutes because there are so many of them. I don't normally cook boiled eggs that long, but um, these need to be hard boiled. So 15 to 17 minutes should be about right. Well, my husband's been gone for two weeks, and I must say my ice tray has never been this full. So, I'm making an ice bath to put the boiled eggs in. Well, eggs have a membrane inside, and as the moisture dehydrate or the inside of the egg dehydrates just a bit or um, the membrane will get an air bubble. The bigger the air bubble, the more dehydrated the egg is and the closer to being bad it is. Um, hence the float test for bad eggs. Now, when you are trying to peel eggs, you want the membrane to come apart from the egg. So what you do is you take hot eggs 
and immediately immerse them into ice water, which causes shrinkage of the membrane and allows it to pull away from the shell. And it looks like we've got one egg that decided to crack. And some of these I'll probably use for salads or egg salad or to eat. We had another one crack, but it didn't spew out. Now you can also put vinegar in your water when you're boiling, if any crack, so they don't, the white doesn't spew out of the egg. But we're going to let those sit and cool. And I will come back and we will peel some eggs. Let the peeling begin. Now the ones that don't peel very good, I'm going to save. I'm going to put these in cold water because they're still kind of warm. My um, water drained out of the sink. So I'm going to put these back in cold water. I usually just kind of mash around find the air bubble but sometimes it just kind of separates this one's doing really nice okay so this is a this is not my recipe um i actually got it from another youtube channel she's actually um, a big contributor to a facebook group that i'm in um lori teglin miller of miller meadows um, anyway, this recipe is one that she does, and it's, it's a fairly simple recipe without a lot of spices and seasonings in it because she keeps these on the shelf so she can um, use her pickled eggs and things like um, um, deviled eggs, um, potato salad and um different uh, like yeah deviled eggs potato salad egg um egg salad and different recipes like that so anything that you would use boiled eggs in you can use these in and so i decided i wanted to try this one because i wanted one that was shelf stable and so this calls for for one dozen you use two cups of vinegar so i think i wound up with about three dozen that are possibly four, that are canning quality. So I need to rinse them off some, but I'm going to go ahead and get my brine started. So I put the vinegar in here, and then I'm going to put some pickling spice it's down here. So this takes three teaspoons of pickling spice, and what she does is she takes a bit of cheesecloth and makes a bag like a sachet and then she takes this and she ties it up
and this also takes um, a teaspoon per um, batch of salt. So I'm going to use Himalayan sea salt. And then she brings that up to a boil. Before I do that though, I want to cut up some onions. And I don't think I have any hot pepper, so I think what I'm going to do is add some red pepper flakes and move it. The red onions would be pretty in them. We will give it a little bit of flavor and it will be a flavor that's compatible with deviled eggs and potato salad and egg salad. To make my pickled eggs. Now Lori did say in, that she keeps this recipe very, very simple without adding a lot of different flavorings. Um, however, you can get creative. She just does it basically so she can use the versatility of it. So I'm going to keep it rather simple, but I do want to add a little spice to it. So that onion doesn't feel like it's any good. Probably going to get about four quarts, but I hated to see all these and these eggs go to waste. Oops! A trash bag in my trash can. All right, now we're going to bring this to a boil and I'm going to gather jars. We're going to bring this to a boil and let it boil for five minutes while these are heating up. And I have some added seasonings that I do want to add to my pickled eggs. <gasps> red pepper flakes, some minced garlic, and I want to do one jar with some Frank's Red Hot pepper sauce. But the others I'm going to leave just the red pepper, the garlic, and the pickling spice along with the onions. And um, jar them up. I should get, we'll let that come to a boil and start cooking it and then we'll be back in just a few minutes when we put the eggs, we'll take the bag out of the brine, put the eggs in the brine and let them cook for 10 minutes and simmer. And then we will pack our jars and we'll be back. All right, so 
five minutes is up. I'm going to remove the pickling spice bag. And then we're going to turn this down to simmer. And I'm going to put the eggs in there. Try not to splash myself. I'm gonna let those simmer for 10 minutes. All right, we're gonna dip these out of the brine back into the bowl so I can handle them a little bit better. Now, I've got some eggs in here that have some yolk exposed, so it may make the brine a little cloudy, but that's okay. Should be fine. Now, jars are hot, brine is hot. Eggs are hot. And I'm going to leave this going over here. All right, I'm going to turn these upright. Warm. Very warm. All right. So we're going to take that. I'm going to first put some onions in the bottom. I'm only going to fix four because I kind of feel like, well, no, I'll go ahead and do five just in case. And then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of minced garlic. And a whole teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And I do not know where my funnel is. It has disappeared. So we're going to do this the best we can without a funnel. See how big a mess I make. All right. So we're going to just hopefully get a dozen eggs per quart. Five, six, seven. Get some more onions. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, Lori does point out to, um, she likes to use these narrow jar, narrow mouth, regular mouth jars because of the shoulders. The, the shoulders help keep the eggs underneath the brine. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And Oops. Okay. 
must already have 12 in there. I must have miscounted. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess we just got 11 in there. There's one more in that one. Okay. All right. So that looks like it. So we're going to just put the brine. And we're going to fill it to um, an inch headspace. Oops. And this one, I'm going to put a little bit of red hot pepper sauce in there. So it's going to be a different color. Wipe the rims and put just a tiny bit more, at least a half inch head space, if not a whole inch. All right, and we're going to put our mix. And then we're going to fingertip tighten them. Alrighty. So, hmm. Now, to put this in my canner and keep the jars from jostling around, I'm going to can up two quarts of water and some people do this on purpose um, it's actually not a bad idea to have some sterile water on hand um, it will like if you're treating a wound or something isn't that pretty it's gonna be so pretty when it comes out too all right so we're gonna put these down in here now I am I'm going to be using my Presto pressure canner as a steam canner. You can water bath these or you can steam can them. And I like to use mine and because I have a glass top stove, I like to use it as a steam canner. And I will tell you how to do that. You do, you follow exactly the same instructions for steam canning as you do for water bathing except you don't have to fill it up above the tops with water and i have started doing that a lot more than water bathing as a matter of fact so basically you set it up just like you set up your pressure canner you leave um, this in and you close it up you turn it up to high and let it come to a boil and start venting and then once it vents this little um, safety valve will pop up when it builds up pressure and then you start your timing for 10 minutes at that point point. and it like i said it does the same thing as water bath canning your bait you're not cooking it under pressure you're just steam canning it and we'll be back as soon as it comes up to a boil All right, so it has started venting and the safety valve is up. So we're going to time this for 10 minutes and we'll be back as soon as they're finished. <laughs> it is really steaming now. This is such a good method to can. Um, I really do like steam canning. It doesn't, I don't think it puts as much stress on my glass top stove 
as um, water bath tanning because when you get water bath when you're water bathing there's so much weight in the canner that I worry sometimes about my glass top although my glass top is designed to tan it's still you know it's worrisome I'd love to have a gas stove but that's for later we got about three minutes and then um, we'll let it come down and then we will vent the top. All right, so we are back in the kitchen and it, the safety valve has gone down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna vent the lid a little bit. Now, the reason I do this is to keep the risk of siphoning to a minimum. Things are going to siphon sometimes because of a sudden drop in temperature. So by allowing it to vent and slowly cool, it decreases the risk of siphoning. Siphoning is when the liquid starts to come out of the jar through the lid. Okay, so we let this vent or cool down just a bit. So I'm going to take the lid completely off. And then we're going to move these over to the table. These look amazing. I got half a gallon of so here's a little bonus. We're gonna make oh there goes one popping. So we're gonna make, or I'm going to make with my eggs that were not worthy of being pickled. I'm gonna make some spicy egg salad. All these eggs, feeling all these eggs making me hungry. Stomach was growling. I use my little OXO chopper. And of course, I can chop those up a little bit more. I'm only making enough for me to have one sandwich. Nothing from the south like Duke's mayonnaise. I think I'm going to add a few little jalapenos. I'm going to can those back in, wow, August of 2020. What else I want to put in here? I'm going to get some of my three day pickles. These are three day pickles. My mother's recipe. Probably the only decent pickles I've ever made. <laughs> They're really good. They're kind of a sweet tart pickle. really good in salads. Mm. 
Mmm, really good. I will definitely be mixing up some more of that. Egg salad, sweet and spicy. Mm. Good stuff. You have had enough eggs, little dog. You're going to stink me out of the bedroom tonight. Mm. Perfect supper. Now, excuse my sniffles. Well, my mic decided to give out, so I just want to say thank you for stopping by, and I'm going to go eat my sandwich now. And you guys have a great evening. God bless. Thanks for dropping in. Good night. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Good night.